In this video, we'll have a few tips and tricks regarding audio, including audio cues and easily adjusting your audio in-game. So let's go and look at audio cues. Now traditionally, if you were going to be using audio, you might think, okay, I'll bring my audio in and then I'll simply play it. So for example, we have our audio here. I have four different ones. And then maybe inside of my actor, I have a, you know, play sound. We'll go with like sound 2D and then I would select my sound and it would play. So, uh, you know, VR, let's shut off the engine content and let it pull on. So we have like this one. So I play the sound, not a problem. Now, okay, um, I want a little variation. Well, okay, we'll, we'll record four different versions. Okay, well now I need to play four different ones. So let me, let me set up maybe four different sound nodes. Or I guess technically I could use a select node and I could put in multiple sound, but then I have to update this every time I want to. And you just might have an issue. Or even let's say you have one sound node, but you still want some sort of variety so it's not repetitive. Well, that's what sound cues are for. So if we go to sounds and then we go to sound cue, we create a sound cue and I'll call this one my VR sound cue. Sound cues are pretty simple. It's basically, you could think of it as the material graph for sounds. We're going to take in stuff, do stuff, and then output something. That's how it works. So by default, it's going to come in like this, and it's not even going to do anything if you hit play. We need to add a wave player. So we could type in wave, and we'll get wave player. We could then select one of our sounds, and there we go. Now it'll work just like if we were playing the sound itself. We could go back into our actor. We could find the play sound node again. And now this time, instead of using the wave, we would do the sound cue itself. And it'll play it back just the same. Now in terms of this being better than a sound, well, again, we had four sounds. What could we do? Well, this is pretty simple. Let's duplicate this node a few times. And our cue can actually hold multiple sounds. So in this case, we'll hold all four sounds like this. And then now we want them to play, but well, only one at a time. Well, in theory, we have a random node. Now the random node will take in any amount of input and randomly pick one as an output. Now, every time we hit play, let me go ahead and make sure it's muted. And then I'm actually going to kill the music on the game so you don't hear it, but you can see the output wires when I hit play. You'll notice it picks a different sound each time. So we have a random built-in feature and we only have to edit the cue itself. Now let's say you only have one or let's say you want a little bit of variety. Let's assume we only have one here. Well, this is pretty simple. We can get a little bit of variety really easily by using some modifier nodes. If we right click, we can find a good chunk of nodes. Some of these modify the sound output. We have things like a Doppler effect or an enveloper. We have a modulator and an oscillator. These things give you, you know, attenuation nodes. They give you little bits of change to the node. So we could go in here and we could do something like a, uh, we'll go with like a modulator here, plug it into the modulator, plug it into the output. And this one little node, we can adjust things like the pitch and the volume. So if your player, for example, walks through a forest and they have a crunching sound on their feet, give it a little bit of a modulator give it a little bit of a modification on the pitch and the volume and not all of your sound steps will sound the same. Now they're all going to sound slightly different with this random variation. And that's a really super simple, easy way of using an audio cue to adjust your sound, give you a little bit, bit of variation and easily allow you to randomize multiple sounds yet only use one node if needed. Now, another nice thing that was added recently is the ability to actually modify the sound volume while playing. Now, it does take a little bit of effort to do it. You'll have to basically work with not only the sound cues, but you'll have to work with sound classes and mixes. All of those can be created under the sounds. Again, we have classes and mixes. Basically, you can think of it this way. The mix is your volume control. The classes are the individual sounds inside of them and the volumes for them. 
the mix itself can apply its changes, its volume control to any of the classes that it supports. So for example, we have a master sound class here. I just simply create a new sound class called master, then I created one called music and one called effects. This master one has two children, effects and music. So if I was to adjust the volume of master, it's going to adjust the volume of effects and music. Or if I adjust effects, it's going to adjust itself and then anything underneath it, if I had anything, etc., all the way down. Now that we have that said, inside of our queue, it has which class it uses. So in this case, this sound effect is going to be under the effects class. So whenever it plays, anything that is affected by the sound effects class here, will apply to that sound. Then in addition to that, we have our sound mix itself, and this determines which sound class it affects. So in this case, it could affect the master sound class by default. So any changes to this sound mix will apply to our master sound class, which will apply to our children as well. Now to actually use it, if we are inside of something and we want to use it, we would use basically these two nodes set sound mix override and push sound mix modifier they work really simply you're going to for example let's do set sound set sound okay come on keyboard sound mix override here we go so we'll go set sound mix override it's going to take in which mix modifier so that's our mount sound mix that we created which class is it going to modify inside of there so do we want to affect just the effects just the master just the music whatever we want. So in this case, it would be the master. If This is my master volume control. Should it apply to any other children inside of that class? So remember how we had multiple children? We'd want to go ahead and do that. And then whatever our new volume will be or pitch and fade if we want. So this right here allows us to set a master volume control. Then after that, you'd simply push your sound mix modifier and make sure it has that sound mix that you just modified. And these two nodes right here allows us to adjust our volume on a global level as long as you're using sound cues and you have them set up properly for the sound classes. Now, technically, you do not have to use sound cues. You could go into the WAV file itself. Each WAV file does have the sound class associated with it. You can see that right here. However, if you use sound cues, you do get the benefits that I pointed out earlier. So that's it. Those are just a few quick audio tips and tricks. Hopefully they will help you out in the long run.